So here's the practice page for today's uh, lesson. I'm going to go through some of it with you. Uh, and we'll kind of just work it through using Kami. If you notice, number one, this one does not look like anything we put in our notes. So when we look at the directions, identify the following as alpha, beta, gamma, or neutron. And we did not talk about neutron decay because it's not part of our standards, a little above the scope of our course. So we can kind of guess that this is a neutron. But if we go on to number two, we can see that that looks very much like the beta decay because beta decay um, basically loses an electron out of the nucleus, which is super weird, but the um, a neutron becomes a proton, so that negative part falls out. So we're going to go ahead and type in beta because this is a beta decay particle. And then number three is the alpha particle that we discussed being a helium atom. So the radioactive element or atom that might lose an alpha particle actually loses two protons and two neutrons in the form of a particle on the helium atom. And then the last one we talked about in our notes, and that is gamma radiation. That is just energy. You can see there is no atomic mass. There is no atomic number listed with this um, type of radiation. So that's just gamma. And that leaves us to know for sure that this one is neutron emission. All right, so then nuclear decay with no mass and no charge. Um, we can tell from what we see up here, that is gamma because there's no, the only one with no mass is gamma radiation. The electron we talked about was kind of weird. It comes out of the nucleus, but it is when that neutron becomes a proton. So beta release penetrating nuclear decay. And I kind of wanted to talk about this one just a little bit, but it's alpha decay. Because if you look at the alpha decay, that is the largest particle. It cannot pass through paper or cannot pass through your, your skin or um, a wall. It's so big, it doesn't fit through the spaces. But the most damaging nuclear decay to the human body is gamma decay because it can penetrate deeper and further than um, the other kinds of radiation. Uh, nuclear decay that can be stopped by skin or paper, again, it's that alpha decay because the particle itself is so large that it can't fit through the empty spaces, the, the gaps that are within the skin and the paper at that atomic level. Nuclear decay that can be stopped by aluminum is beta decay. So you have to have something a little bit tougher to stop beta decay, but it will still be stopped by aluminum. All right, so let's digest some of these, and you'll do some of these on your own. If we look at number 11 here, it says complete the following nuclear equations. So we have potassium 42, and we have this particle being emitted. If we look, this matches beta. I'm going to go ahead and label it beta so that I can first identify, but second, remember what it said in our notes to do with beta. With beta decay, one of your neutrons becomes a proton, so your mass does not change. So we're going to go ahead and type 42. And then your proton number will increase by 1. So we have 19 plus 1 is 20. So then I look at this and I say, okay, which element is number 20? Checking out the periodic table, number 20 is calcium. So I would go ahead and put calcium there, and that's the proper format to put your answer in. Come over to number 12. You can see number 12 has that alpha particle. So I'm going to go ahead and label it alpha. That was not in the instructions. It's just an extra step for us to remember and identify what we are looking at. So if we look at this element and we see plutonium 239 emits alpha radiation and what it's asking what is left because if this plutonium throws out an alpha particle it's going to change it changes its nucleus so 239 minus 4 is 235 and then we look 94 minus 2 is 92 so we ask ourselves okay which element is number 92 look at our periodic table it is uranium 
and that's the answer there. So either kind of a mission that you look at, you have to think what is happening to the nucleus? How does it change? Alpha is probably the easiest because you're just going to subtract. 239 minus 4, 235, 94 minus 2 is 92. Okay, looking back at the beta decay, you're, you're doing the same thing with mass, 42 minus 0 is still 42, but you have to remember if we're losing an electron, that neutron became a proton, so I'm going to add a proton there. And we'll go ahead and look at number, 30, number 13. We have beryllium 9, and we still have beryllium 9. So what kind of radiation makes no change to the nucleus? We can go ahead and label that gamma radiation. Um, I don't have a Greek uh, alphabet to put on here, so we're just going to use a capital Y. But it's 0, 0. And I know it's inappropriate to put a capital Y here because that's the element yttrium. But for our purposes, I will understand what you are doing. If you put the 0 and the 0 because yttrium does not have an atomic mass of 0 and does not have an atomic number of 0. So uh, number 14 is just a little bit different. You start with uranium-235, and you end up with thorium-231, but it's asking you what happened, what was thrown out, what kind of decay occurred here. And so we have to do a little algebraic thinking. If I started with 92 and I ended with 90, I had to lose a 2. If I started with 235 and I ended with 231, I had to lose 4. So when I look at that, it matches that alpha particle. So I know that I had an alpha particle thrown out from the uranium nucleus and it became the thorium-231. Okay, go ahead and do number 15 for yourself. Number 16 is an example of the neutron decay. Um, so I'll kind of talk through it, but essentially it's asking what did you start with in this question. So if I know that I had barium and krypton, I had 56 protons and 36 protons, and my nu my neutrinos here did not have any protons. So 56 and 36 is 92, and 142. Then we add the masses, 142 and 91, and then you have three of these. So you would be adding three for this, and you come up with 236. And again, the element that's atomic number is 92 right here is uranium. uranium. Hmm. All right. And so those are the kinds of things that you'll have to be able to do um, on your own. Then if you look at these examples, one atom of potassium decaying to one atom of calcium, we don't really look at one atom ever because it's really too little, it's too tiny to think about, we usually look at masses of atoms, mass, a mass of calcium or a mass of potassium. And over here, a mass of plutonium would turn into a certain mass of uranium. So these things have to happen over and over again. They also don't necessarily indicate that they're going to be stable with just one decay. So sometimes it takes a series of decay so here's uranium, and it would go through alpha decay, and then become thorium. The thorium went through beta and gamma decay to become protactinium, and beta and gamma decay it becomes uranium. Again, notice it's a different isotope because it has a different number of neutrons, but uranium again. Then it emits alpha and gamma decay to become thorium. Alpha and gamma decay to become protactinium. Alpha and gamma decay to become radium. Radium emits alpha decay to become polonium. Polonium begins alpha decay to become lead. Lead emits beta and gamma decay to become bismuth and beta and gamma decay to become polonium and alpha decay to be lead and then beta and gamma decay to become bismuth and bismuth 210 emits beta decay to become polonium 210 and then become emits alpha decay so an alpha particle that helium atom to, be, to become lead 206 and lead 206 is a stable isotope so it's happy it's stable it doesn't need to throw anything else out of its nucleus 
So this series of events is what it took for uranium-238 to become a stable isotope as lead-206. Okay. So what these questions here are asking you to look at are how many alpha particles are produced as one atom of uranium-238 decays to an atom of lead-206. So we're just going to count the alphas. Here's an alpha. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we just click eight there. How many beta particles? You just count the betas. One, two, three, four, five, six. That one's kind of um, simple to look at, but at some point you're going to have to do the series. So I say um, uranium-238 undergoes alpha decay, beta decay, gamma, and you would have to figure out going through each of the steps, just like you did up here in this section of the worksheet. So um, let's go through 19 together, and then I'll let you finish the worksheet. So write an equation showing that when protactinium-229 goes through two alpha decays, francium-221 is formed. All right, well, we're going to start with 229. And protactinium is number 91. All right, and then I'm going to make an arrow this way. Protactinium 91 undergoes two alpha decays. So I know my alpha decay is four. Helium. And what am I going to come up with? Well, 229 minus four would be 225. And 91 minus two is 89. So if I look at that, number 89 on the periodic table is actinium. So that's going to be a C. Okay, so there's one alpha decay. So I'm going to go ahead and make another arrow. Okay. And I know that it's going to have another alpha decay. So I'm going to say make my alpha particle, which is a helium atom. And what's left? Well, 225 loses 4, and that makes 221. 89 loses 2, and that makes 87. So element number 87 is, in fact, francium. And so that's what you would come up with. All right, so you're going to do the same kind of thing for number 20. Number 21, the chain, the decay chain or series of uranium-238 is shown in the following figure. What is the final product in the decay series? So we start up here. Lead-206 is what you would end up saying, just like you saw in this series. Okay, so you're going to use this graph. And then number 23 is, is where you have to start. Thorium-232 undergoes radioactive decay until a stable isotope is reached. Write the reactions for the decay of two, thorium-238. There are 11 steps beginning with alpha decay, with each product becoming the reactant of the next decay. Circle the final stable isotope. So if we start here with alpha decay, thorium-232, and we'll just go ahead and do the first line so you kind of get the idea. Thorium-232 undergoes an alpha decay. It's a terrible arrow. It's okay. And it's going to become... Let's see, 232 minus 4 is 228. And 90 minus 2 is 88. So I look at what element is 88. That is radium. So I look at radium and I say, all right, that radium right here is going to start my next line. So you might need to do this off to the side a little bit. Or, you know what, we can make the font smaller. Yeah, that kind of works. It's really hard to see on the video, I'm sure, but you get the idea. You can 
manipulate it to where you can see it pretty well. But but that's going to be what you start. And then you're going to take a beta decay. And with beta decay, we know that this radium is going to have a proton added to it. So we're going to end up with um, 228 as the same number. It doesn't change the mass number. But then the atomic number would be 89. And that would be octinium again. So we're going to go back. We're going to have actinium as our product. And that's what you'd start this line with. So go ahead and finish those. And hopefully... That makes a lot of sense.